Ladies and gents, welcome back today. I'm just gonna jump straight into the content because we have seen a massive acceleration over the last week in terms of not only social unrest, protests, riots, but major events that if you've been a subscriber for quite a long time, you'll recall I talked about this quite a long way back, how we would go on to what's known as the hockey stick. So if you haven't been a subscriber for a long time, or even if you've just forgotten, let me give you a refresher of what this means. So the hockey stick dictates, if you think of the shape of a hockey stick, it goes like this at the bottom, doesn't it? It dips. And oftentimes what I've referred this to or compared it to is actually think of it as an inversion of this. So rather than things going down negatively, actually this is something that's happening positively. And then what you have is it goes like that, like a rocket. Now this going up, is actually the negative cycle. So what have we seen then? Let me give you an example. When we went through the whole lockdowns, we saw this uh, huge growth thanks to money and all this new currency creation. I'm gonna come on to that because we're gonna link this to what's happened in Sri Lanka. What did I say on my walk and talk months back now? Sri Lanka would fall. Their country, and this is very rare by the way, for a country to completely collapse. Yes, they go into these major, major events where everything breaks down and you have social breakdown, but the collapse of a country is not as common as you might think. So what do I mean by that? This is where everything has gone. You've got f the food supplies collapsed, the energy supply has collapsed, you've got the, the medicine, healthcare collapsed, the government has now collapsed, and the people have overrun the palace. If you haven't seen these scenes, I, I joke you not, when someone sent this video to me and I saw it, I thought this was a computer game. When I saw the masses just rush the palace and just, you know, overrun the palace, I actually thought that was video game footage when I first saw it. It was only when I looked closer that I realized, actually this is real footage and it has happened. Sri Lanka is now a failed state or country. So everything that I talked about on Friday, and by the way, that video has now been shadow banned, which I, I thought it would do, which is always frustrating when you've got a, a over 100,000 views on a video and you think, okay, I'm finally going to earn a little bit of good ad advertising revenue here. Oh no, video is shadow banned, demonetized. But anyway, what I talked about on, the, on that video was all of these events that had happened last week events that are once in a decade type of things. An assassination on the former PM of Japan. We had 60 cab MPs or cabinet ministers, whatever you wanna call them, in the UK, thereby pretty much collapsing the government. Yes, they brought in replacements and people to take over the jobs, but you know yourself, it takes a long time for people to get up to speed. We've now got what could happen today or over the next couple of days. And again, this is not confirmed, but a possible vote of no confidence against Boris Johnson to kick him out of power early. We now have this leadership race with the Conservatives, with some very, very sketchy people. If you remember, I did some exposés on some of these people that are running for Prime Minister. I mean, this shows how out of touch the public is when they don't know the basic facts behind some of these people running for prime minister. We also have the Dutch farmers protest, which is really escalating. We have now not just protests there, but it's gone to Poland and Germany and all these other countries. We're seeing this spreading. What else are we seeing? We're now seeing the cost of living crisis, riots, and, and they're not just protests, they're now riots throughout dozens of countries around the world. Is the media reporting on any of this? Absolutely not, because it's not part of that whole agenda, that whole plan. Why don't they report on it? A lot of people always ask me, because if they report on it, people will start to see the truth that actually not everyone just goes along with whatever the media says. Actually, there is a huge amount of people who are awake to what's happening with the whole Great Reset initiative. Yes, I have just used the keywords. This video will probably get shadow banned and demonetized as well. But that is what we're seeing. And in fact, Sri Lanka is a perfect example of this. I don't know if you might have seen this. It's, it's sort of on a few memes and things like that lately. A few people are talking about it. And that was this article that was published by the WEF about Sri Lanka. 
Sri Lanka were, people don't know this, they were the test case for the Great Reset. They were. And, you know, the WEF did all these articles on them. They published all this stuff about how great Sri Lanka was. I was one of those people. And again, I wasn't the only one. I'm not taking credit for forecasting this. A lot of people said this. All of these initiatives, these socialist initiatives, will collapse the country. They will collapse the economy. They will collapse the food supply by removing all the fertilizers and going natural. We said this would happen, it's now here. And in fact, let me just show you that the article was removed. Sorry, but we can't find the page you were looking for. Now, fortunately for me, I have the Wayback Machine so I can actually find this, which was deleted from their website. Sri Lanka PM, this is how I will make my country rich by 2025. And then he did, the, there was this whole thing. Look, this was the plan. We talked about this on the Great Reset video. This was the plan. It's this whole movement, digital transformation, productive agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. This is what is planned for the world right now. And one mistake they made when they deleted all of that, they didn't delete the links, which I have gone through and now saved on the um, time machine, whatever you want to call it. I've saved all of these links now so you can read all the sort of stuff that they wanted to hide. And this is from the World Bank as well. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is the M1 supply. So you have M1, M2, M3. This is the currency supply. Specifically, that is what M1 is. It's currency in circulation. And it's also bank deposits, so current accounts, I guess we can say. Then you have M2, M3. I won't go into all that. It will make it too complicated. But this is what they have done. Here is the lockdown pandemic period. And they printed too much currency thereby weakening their currency overall because inflation is an expansion of the currency supply. Why am I showing you that? Because here we go, what did the euro, the eurozone, the ECB do? Again, do you see the pattern here? It is the same chart. What about Australia for my Australian subscribers? It is the same chart, there it is. They've done the same thing. Canada for my Canadians, the same thing. Why do you think Trudeau is doing what he's doing right now? Uh, what about the UK? United Kingdom as well. Now, they've started to slow it down a little bit, but they've still done it. They've done too much currency creation. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go, especially these developing nations, they're going to go anytime soon, but they are going to have problems. One of the countries that won't have as many problems uh, we're, we're seeing now, which was very unexpected, is the United States. The dollar is actually strengthening. Now, a couple of people did forecast this, so credit to them, but the majority of people did not forecast that the dollar would strengthen the way it has. Now, the stronger the dollar is getting, the weaker a lot of the other currencies are becoming. Why? Because they thought they could do what the USA has done and just print, 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 but they don't have the world reserve currency. So many of you ask me, Neil, why is inflation so bad in the UK? Well, the UK has created too much currency via the Bank of England. What about Australia and Canada and all these other countries? In fact, inflation on a global scale, if you take it country by country, has never been this severe in decades and decades and possibly even ever in history because we have this globalization which is now broken down thereby making the inflation worse due to uh, labor costs remember uh, a huge amount of the world lives on less than two dollars per day so we have this huge breakdown in this labor pool which was uh, beforehand easy to get work out of or use and again i'm not saying that in a positive way i'm just saying this is what capitalism did you also had all of the energy the energy is now more expensive pushing up costs you now have less food as we go into this grand solar minimum. And the farmers know this. The farmers are protesting everywhere. The farmers know as well that the crop yields are lower. So you start removing all the fertilizers or up to 95% of fertilizer removal, nitrogen-based uh, in particular in, in um, the Netherlands for the Dutch people. The farmers know. So that is why they are blockading supermarkets and other things because they want to give a real life example to the citizens. Look, if we blockade, there is no food. Because if you take away our fertilizers, 
there is no food. And this is why they're doing it. They want to actually show the people who I believe are behind the farmers. I don't believe the people are behind this government policy, which is not even from the Dutch government. It is from GFANS or the you know, UN or WEF, whoever you want to pin it to, because they're all interconnected and the same organization at the heart of it. But the other thing that we actually have right now is a sovereign debt crisis all around the world. There are more than 70 countries right now that are in the early stages or the mid stages of a sovereign debt crisis. Sri Lanka was just one of the first. And remember, they did go to the IMF for a bailout loan and it was being structured, but the, it, the measures were so draconian that it would have caused, a, a, I guess we can say, a societal breakdown anyway, whether they receive that loan or not. And to give you an example that's sort of modern day, I suppose we can say, if you think back to the 1980s period where we had the oil shock, we had the cost of living crisis back then, this is a good example. Well, I guess I should probably have said 1970s period into the 1980s where we had rampant inflation, where some of you will remember 15% mortgage rates. Yes, for the millennials watching, people back in the 70s, 80s saw the period had 15% interest rates. And some, some of you are complaining about three and a half, four, five percent Imagine 15%. But what actually happened in that period, 1982 in particular, Mexico sovereign debt crisis, it collapsed, it fell. What happened after? We had this knock-on effect with the other countries in South America. We also had this in a period in Southeast Asia where the whole, pretty much all of Southeast Asia collapsed in a sovereign debt crisis as well. But yes, specifically in South America, not all of those countries did collapse. We did have some that didn't. Who do we have? We had um, Paraguay and Uruguay and Bolivia, Guyana, Suriname. You know, there was a few countries that didn't collapse, but the majority of them, especially if you look at it on a map, not in terms of the number, but on a map, the majority of uh, South America did collapse. Now, I mentioned 70 countries there, but there are actually 107 countries or close to 1.8 billion people. That is a more accurate forecast as we go into the sort of, well, I guess we're in the summer now, but as we go through July and into August time, that is the sort of more accurate number. It could even be 110 countries by that period. What I'm saying is this is now accelerating. And it, it baffles me, absolutely, I, I don't understand why so many people still, still, two years later, can't see it. They cannot see what is going on right now. They think, oh yeah, you know, they think something like 60 cabinet ministers resigning and all of this stuff going on and an assassination and all of these countries that are starting to collapse now. They don't see it connected. They just see it as disconnected events. It is not disconnected. This is how it starts. And in fact, it isn't even the start. We're about halfway through now. We've still got a lot more to come. So if you recall that walk and talk video, where I gave you those other countries which I thought could actually collapse. Well, in fact, that's probably too strong a word. Let me just say that they may have a sovereign debt crisis and that may affect a lot of things in terms of social unrest and more protests. Let me give you a couple of those countries now then. So uh, Pakistan is one, uh, Egypt, Lebanon, uh, Peru, El Salvador, Argentina, South, uh, South Africa, Ethiopia, Turkey, um, Tunisia. These are all countries which I believe are going to have some major, major problems, shall we say, as we go through the next 12 months. Now, the other thing that is very interesting and you should pay careful attention to is that what's actually happening with these countries the IMF and the World Bank are in talks with most of them about debt restructuring, so giving them loans. If this happens, if they actually give loans to these countries and you then have more, and, and then let's say all the developing nations, so we're talking about 110 countries on average there, and again, they're not all developing, there's some that are sort of mid-range, but if all of those end up on these debt restructuring packages, it is very close to game over. Now, if the West then, if we have failures, for example, in the Euro, the Euro is a ticking time bomb. Eventually it will collapse. It has to collapse because 
If, in fact, look what you see in Italy having a lot of problems, a lot of protests as well. You have some countries that are very strong and powerful financially. You have others that are very weak. And the weaker countries will pull down the others or the others will try and break away. This is all the things to come. Now, if some of the developed nations, so the Western nations, then have to get uh, IMF or World Bank bailout loans, it is pretty much game over because we're going to be even closer then to a one world currency. And it probably won't be the US dollar because the US dollar, again, is on uh, borrowed time, although it is strengthening right now and it probably will continue to strengthen. But that's only against a backdrop of all the other currencies that are weakened. The US dollar really is a lot weaker. It's lost 95% of its value if you go back far enough. But this is what inflation does. This is why these people actually, and I won't say who they are, actually like inflation. Because yes, it destroys your purchasing power, but it actually pays off a lot of their debt. And this is another reason why the government loves inflation. They pretend, you know, they do all these press conferences, we're going to tackle inflation. In fact, Rishi Sunak, who could be the next prime minister, he's talking about how he's going to tackle inflation. He's going to come in, he's going to do all this stuff. Why didn't he do it for the last year then? He's been chancellor for a while now. Why didn't he do any of this then? Because he doesn't want to. He wants to help out his buddies. Inflation is great for the government because it pays off all of their debt that they have created over the last two years. The fact of the matter is as well, the government cannot afford to even service that debt. Think about it. If interest rates are you know, record low right now, okay, they've gone up a little tiny bit, but they're still record low interest rates. If you start raising those interest rates, how is the government gonna pay off their debt? They can't service the debt. They would have to increase taxes, which they can't even do on the people right now because it would just collapse the economy. So what comes next then? What do I really want to get across to you right now? I guess it is that this is accelerating. These events are going to get worse. Now, it's probably not going to get much worse for Sri Lanka. How do you get much worse than a complete collapse of the economy? Well, I guess we could see more social unrest. You could see less food available. You could see people starving to death. You could see um, a lot more violence and conflict, but there isn't really much further than that. But for a lot of other nations, we're starting to see them dipping into these sort of regions now. We are gonna see, because again, there is not good crop yields as of this year, we're seeing a lot of, again, drought. This Books are fascinating. His, if you read history and you start to put all the patterns together, you'll see it's the same things every time. It is drought, it is flooding, it is famines. These are all the sort of things that level inequality all over again, as well as the big one, which is social unrest, where you know what happens there. I don't need to spell it out for you. What do we see in Sri Lanka? politicians hunted in the street. I won't tell you what happened. I mentioned it on another video and that video was shadow banned again. But you know what happened if you remember what actually happened to those politicians that were caught. Not good. The prime minister's house has just been burned down as we know in, in Sri Lanka. A lot of the politicians, their houses burned down. This is going to accelerate. We're gonna see a lot more problems in more countries. Just make sure that you are prepared. Watch through the playlists on the channel. It will help you with a lot of things. If you haven't joined the private community, the link is below to join Patreon. You know, all of these things, there's a forum there, everything else, it will help you to actually navigate this crisis and get through it. Make sure that you've got your pantry stocked up with food as well, long life food. Do all of these things and it will put you in a much stronger position than the average person on the street. That is all we've got time for today. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, see you then, take care, God bless.